Hi, in today's video, we're going to be working on basic land navigation. We're going to practice our skills here in the city, so we'll be much better when we arrive here. Hello and welcome to Let's Go Now Adventures Outdoor Skills Courses. In this course, we'll be covering basic land navigation and orienteering. This course is a starting point with our goal of giving you the skills to confidently take your adventures a little further, to expand your range of exploring and discovery, and most importantly, to get you back safely. In this course, I'll be covering the tools used in land navigation, like maps, compasses, and GPS devices, but more importantly, I'll be showing you how to think like a navigator and use the most important tool you have. It's a tool you'll always have with you. It's your mind. If you're bad with directions or new to land navigation, this course is a must for you. If you plan to adventure off the beaten path or even just getting around in a new city. If you're experienced at using maps, a compass, or a GPS, this course will help fill in the gaps and hopefully enhance the skills and knowledge you already have. It's been proposed that some people are good with directions and navigation and others are not. I don't believe this. I think the difference is practice and knowing how to think like a navigator. I do believe that everyone can get better with navigation with a little bit of knowledge and a lot of practice. Hi, I'm John with Let's Go Now Adventures. And whether you're into tent camping or RV camping, we create videos to help you have a better camping experience. In this episode, we're going to learn what it's like to think like a navigator. The reason we are starting here is because all of the tools we use in land navigation, once again, like maps, compasses, those are just tools. The tools by themselves are of no value to us, if we can't fully use the information we gain from them. It's our brains that take the information, process it, and in this case, give us the information about our position relative to the rest of the world. The most important navigation tool is right up here. So the first step at becoming good with directions or land navigation is to turn off your GPS. Alexa, turn off turn-by-turn -turn directions. I'm sorry, John. I'm afraid I can't, I can't do that. This mission is too important for me to allow you to jeopardize it. So even though you're not using your turn-by-turn -turn directions, the maps that these portable devices provide, I still encourage you to use those. You'll need those, actually. So let's do a little thought exercise. Have you ever driven to a place where the route is very familiar and maybe you were listening to a great song or you were deep in thought. You got to your destination and you can't remember your trip or whether or not you locked your front door. All of the navigation critical skills your mind did subconsciously. You avoided hitting another car. You turned at the right place. You stopped at red lights and you even locked your front door. Now imagine you're listening to that great song or you're deep in thought again and all of a sudden the road that you're traveling is blocked. So no worries, you, right? You just start driving a different direction and Alexa will kick in and tell you the right way to go. Oh no, I won't. You're on your own, buddy. So what do you do? You tune out the song, you stop thinking about what you were thinking about before, and your entire focus is on land navigation. The skills and mindset you're going to need to navigate the outdoors can be practiced every day on ordinary days, right here, right at home. So one of the first skills that we're gonna be working on is an exercise called Where is North? This is an exercise that if you take nothing else away from these courses, will by itself make you a better navigator. We're gonna need some tools for this. So what we're gonna need is our devices. You can use your cell phone, whether it's an iPhone or an Android phone, it doesn't really matter. What you're gonna to need to do is get an, a compass app on your phone. Now, on 
your iPhone, just the stock Compass app that comes with your iPhone is going to work. There's another one called Commander Compass. On Android, I know a good free alternative is called Steel Compass. Now, what you're going to want to do is go into the settings and make sure you switch your settings to read to True North. Now, it's going to ask you to verify your location. It's okay for this purpose because it needs to know where you are in order to give you a good true north. You can always turn this off and delete this program later. But right now for this exercise, what I'd like you to do is make sure you have the compass available, this compass app, and you're going to make sure it's pointed to true north. Now, as you go places, as you visit things, let's try it right now. What I'd like you to do is wherever you're sitting, point north. Now pull out your device, turn the compass on, and check it to see which way north is. If the compass is pointing north in the same direction as you pointing north, give yourself a pat on the back, you're correct. But what if you're off by a little bit? Well, this is something that we'll get better at as we practice this exercise. Any place you're in somewhere that's not completely familiar, try it. Just ask yourself which way is north. Now, you don't have to point. That'll look kind of silly. But just check. And then check it with your compass. Anytime you go to someplace new, ask yourself before you check the compass, which way do you think is north? And then pull out your compass and check it. You know, sometimes you can be pretty far off. And it can be pretty jarring how far it is. Because now you have to turn the rest of the world and readjust it to line up with what really it now is north. If you do this exercise and you do this exercise often, it'll give you and train you the way to keep track of north. So if you know where north is, you know where all the other directions are, now you've taken a huge step to becoming a great land navigator. You know, we navigate every day. You're already using the skills you need to be a great land navigator. Let's just make them better. In this exercise, I want you to think about a trip you make often, like work or going to the grocery store. Now I want you to answer to yourself, how do you know you're on the right path when you take this trip? This may seem like a dumb question. You do it every day. It's automatic, right? Take that same trip, and now your job is to tell someone who is completely unfamiliar with the area how to take that trip based only on your directions. You can do this as a purely, as a mental exercise, but what really makes you better at giving directions is to write the turn-by-turn -turn steps down. If you do this, I guarantee the next time you take this trip, you'll be more observant and see more details. Details you may never have noticed before, and you take this trip every day. This exercise will enhance those same skills you need in the backcountry. We now know how to find north Let's fill in the rest of the directions. If you're facing north, east will be on your right, south will be behind you, and west will be on your left. Let's fill this in a little more. Halfway between north and east is northeast. Halfway between east and south is southeast. Halfway between south and west is southwest. And halfway between west and north is northwest. Now let's take this a step further. If you were to spin to the right all the way around, you will have done a 360. That means you will have turned through 360 degrees of rotation relative to north. Let's look at this a different way. If you're facing north at 90 degrees is east, at 180 degrees is south, at 270 degrees is west, and at 360 degrees you're back at north or back at zero. So earlier we did an exercise about finding north. We did it, we were looking for true north. It's always in the same place. And left and right can point in different directions, depending on your orientation or the direction you're facing. North, south, east, and west are better ways to think of directions than left, right, up, and down. Let's use this example. Here we have a boater on the water. Let's call him Steve. It's a clear day and Steve can see clearly 
that his camp is to his right. Then seemingly out of the blue, the weather changes and fog rolls in. In the fog, Steve gets turned around, but remembering that camp is on his right, he paddles that way, away from camp. So have you ever been given directions from somebody and it sounds something like this? I'll tell you how to get there, it's simple. You just go up Main for a while, now turn at that chicken place. I can't remember the name. Go until you see that car place with the balloons. You're gonna be on this road for a minute. Turn and just follow the curvy road to the street before the light. Turn there, go for a while, you can't miss it. What was wrong with those directions? First, we didn't establish where our friend was or which way they were facing. And all of our directions made it difficult for our friend to get a mental map of their relative position to you. The landmarks, distances, and steps were vague and unclear. These directions are sure to get our friend lost. Being able to give good directions and understanding what to question when you're given directions that are sure to get you lost. This ability translates directly into the outdoors in the backcountry. The advantage is these are skills we can practice every day. When you think like a navigator, you will never get lost in the city or the country. Landmarks are important to becoming a good land navigator. A landmark can be anything you can use to mark your path, know where to turn, know when you've arrived, or even when you've gone too far. With landmarks, the bigger, the better. And as you select landmarks to aid in your navigation, it's a good idea to determine how permanent those are. The less likely your landmarks are to disappear or change, the better they are. In the next exercise, we'll be using examples of landmarks that are both big and permanent. We're going to use Las Vegas as an example for how to build a mental map. All right, so let's get a map, get a good map. In this case, I'm using Google Maps. And what we'll want to do first is make sure that the map is oriented with the top being north. We notice first that I-15, the main freeway, runs for the most part north and south. But right up at the top, it veers off towards the northeast. We all look around and we can see that for the most part, the streets are all laid out in a north-south, east-west grid pattern. There's a major through street on the west and another major through street on the east. Both of those run all the way north and south. There's a map marking we notice, it's here in pink, and that's for the Stratosphere Tower. You know, the Stratosphere Tower is a very, it's one of the tallest structures, I think it is the tallest structure in Las Vegas. It can be seen from points all over Las Vegas Valley. If we switch our map to satellite view, we'll see that there's a prominent mountain range on the west side of the valley. That can be seen at any time during the daytime. Las Vegas Boulevard, the strip, runs parallel but just east of I-15. We also notice that McLaren Airport is down at the end, south end of the strip, east of Las Vegas Boulevard and the freeway. That's nice because planes will be taking off from the airport day and night and we can track their path. Once we know where the planes are landing, then we can place the airport in ourselves in relationship to it. Now you have a mental map of Las Vegas. You have a framework for the way the city is laid out in your head now. The main features and landmarks are there. Now as you visit Las Vegas, you'll be able to fill in the gaps. As you travel the city, you'll be able to add new landmarks and discoveries to fill in the details of your mental map. Without that original mental map, all of those landmarks are out of context. And as we saw with the guy in the boat, we could be building a mental version of Las Vegas that's wrong. So the next key mental skill that I want you to learn is keeping track of distance. We typically measure distance in units of length, such as miles, kilometers, yards, and meters. And those are 
those are awesome. Those are probably the most accurate. But you know, we can also use steps to determine how far we've traveled. We can use time. If we have a good idea of how fast we're moving, we can use that time to determine how far we've traveled. You know, we can also use landmarks to mark off distance. This example, you go through three lights and on the third light, you turn to the west. So the next skill I'd like you to think about is dividing any journey into segments or legs. We want to divide this into shorter sections. The shorter the leg is or the section, the less likely you are to deviate from your course. And then each point along the way at the end of each segment maybe is a waypoint that you've identified as being someplace where you're either going to turn or you've made it. It lets you know that you're on course. You know, your GPS devices do the same thing. They give you the directions in legs. They may say, turn down main, and then it doesn't say anything for a minute, but in a little while it says, in 100 yards, you're going to turn left on Adams Street. What those are is your GPS is giving you the directions in legs. All right, so we've made it to the end of episode one of basic land navigation. I know that this was different than most land navigation videos you may have seen so far, but really it's important to work on the mental skills really to build a foundation before we add the tools like compasses and GPSs. In upcoming episodes, we'll cover those. To summarize, we did our finding north exercise and checking that against your compass. Once again, that is probably, if you take nothing away from this video today, the most important thing, if you get good at that skill, you'll become a much better navigator. We looked at the differences between left and right and north, south, east, and west. We also worked on building a mental map and using landmarks to help define that. The other thing is we talked a little bit about distance and breaking your journey into legs. Now, if you can start to think like a navigator, I guarantee that with practice, you'll get better at finding directions around town, and you're much more likely to be able to venture into the backcountry to go on adventures further and farther and get back safely. I'm John with Let's Go Now Adventures, and I'll see you on the next adventure.